This might be a bit of weird background, but hang on until I, teen female, explain. My parents were young when they had me. My mom had no family of her own, and from the age of 12, when she and my dad first met, my dad's family became hers too. My bio parents dated throughout high school and had me right after graduating. My mom died in her sleep when I was only six months old. She was 19. My dad was never interested in me. And he and my grandparents fought a lot from when I was born to when my mom died. They were disgusted with his lack of love or concern for me. They wanted him to be a better father than he was and pointed out my mom was the same age as him and had stepped up, but he wasn't interested. After my mom died, my grandparents were terrified that my dad would mess me up, so they made a deal with him. They would get legal custody, raise me, and give him some money every month to do what he liked. I know it sounds strange, but they saw it as a way to keep him from me unless he was serious about being a dad. I never actually saw him at all when I was little. I saw him from a distance for the first time a couple of years ago. He had some woman with him. They later got married. I would see them around but decided to keep my distance still. His wife knew about me before they even married. Now they're having a baby girl and the wife told my aunt they wanted to name their baby Serenity, which is my name. She spoke to me about it because she wanted to warn me. The second I heard about this, I hated it. I saw so many issues because we would have the exact same name. I have no middle name and my aunt said they had no plans to use a middle name either. Our last names would be the same too. Plus, it felt like sharing a name could be used by some people to push for me to be in the child's life. I asked my grandparents if they could convince him not to do it. They spoke to him and he was saying he just wanted his wife to be happy. They told him he could forget about the money if he did since it would be messing me over. I think my grandparents also hated that he was sending a clear message that he never loved me by just using the name of the kid he wanted to raise. My dad ended up backing down. His wife was angry and she blamed me even though he said it was my grandparents who intervened. She said she knew I must have said I didn't like it and whatever I did, I was a selfish little witch because I took away her chance to name her child what she wanted. She said Serenity was a name she chose when she was little and always wanted to use it. My grandparents came home while she was ranting at me and made her leave. My dad and his wife are no longer welcome at all. I can't get what she said out of my head. So I feel I need to ask, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You should be extremely glad your real parents had the foresight to see your bio dad as a total piece of crap. What a selfish idiot. Please don't take whatever his garbage second wife says to heart. It had nothing to do with you, but always had everything to do with him. He wanted to name his new daughter your same name as a do-over. I'm so sorry you're going through this. That is appalling behavior by your dad. He chooses not to be in your life and then chooses to start a new family and to top it off, he decides to use the same name? Crazy. As a teen, you're already more mature than your father is now and well beyond your father's wife. They are wrong for trying to steal your name. I don't buy the wife's story at all. The name is so unusual that it just makes no sense. She may have already thought that the name was pretty or something, but the only reason she's being this implacable about demanding that name is that she doesn't like that her husband has a daughter he dipped out on and sees this as an opportunity to erase her from existence. OP's deadbeat dad and his shrew of a wife sound like two idiots who totally deserve each other. But damn, OP, I'm so sorry you're stuck in this situation. Why are your grandparents still giving him money? It would be better to have a college fund for you. They felt it was better to continue until I was 18, but they're considering stopping. They were still able to save a college fund for me. I don't know how much is there yet. We're meant to discuss it soon, though, because they want to discuss some options with me. I had a good childhood. I grew up knowing I was loved not just by family who raised me, but by my mom as well. Knowing my family loved my bio mom and remembering her still made things a lot easier for me. They all looked out for me and made sure I was good. My cousin Jay got pregnant when she was 19. She was out of high school and lived with our grandparents. It was not a good time for her. Her half-brother and I were both in grade 12 and we had jobs. We decided to help her out of our own free will. No one asked us to or asked us for money. We just loved her and knew she needed support. She had a girl named Callie. We helped buy diapers and formula. We babysat so Jay could work and go out every once in a while. Jay met a nice guy and married him two years ago. He has two kids from a previous relationship that he gets on the weekends. 
Callie is a tween now and I still hang out with her. Lately, Jay has been asking me to take out her stepkids when I take Callie out. I told her no, I don't know those kids and don't really want to be responsible for them. I like spoiling my little cousin, but that's it. She's been great practice for when I have kids. Jay says I'm creating a schism between her kids because Callie returns from hanging out with me and the other kids get jealous. She thinks I should take all the kids or stop doing stuff with Callie. Callie heard her and she may have picked up some language from me because she was very vocal about her displeasure. My mom thinks I should take the kids. I said I would if she keeps an eye on them around the axes, knives and throwing stars. She said we could take the kids to a bouncy play area. I said she could take the kids there while Callie and I did our thing and we would catch up after. She said I was missing the point. I don't need to include those kids. Not the idiot. You have a special bond with Callie, not with her stepkids. Kids need to learn to manage disappointment and this is an excellent opportunity for them to get some practice in. Not everything in life is fair and equal, which can be painful to accept, but it's also a reality we must accept. The kids have barely been step nibblings for two years and the dad only gets them on weekends. So why is the new husband ready to pawn his kids off on other people the two days he gets them? The dude's already just the weekend dad. If Callie wants the step-siblings to join, she's the one who has to ask OP. Otherwise, the dad needs to figure this crap out. You aren't obligated to take any kids you don't want to, but I can see why your cousin is upset. It's causing an issue between Callie and the other kids, and I'm sure they're hurt over it. I understand not wanting to be responsible for the kids when you're doing activities, but damn, you can't even throw in a simple McDonald's trip or something one day. Regardless, this situation sucks. You should actively try and make it better. Chances are, to create a better bond between the kids, you're going to find yourself left out. You don't live in a vacuum. You have to see how your actions are affecting two innocent kids. To ignore that is just wrong. I, female 27, work in a team of five. One of the members, let's call her Ava, is pregnant. Our company allows only six months of paid maternity leave. Ava has been having a rough pregnancy and has been ordered bed rest by her doctor. She's only in her second trimester, but she's already been calling in sick a lot and has extinguished her paid sick leaves. She and her husband are renting and could be doing better financially. They need her income for the next five months till the baby is due and she can officially go on paid maternity leave. Our boss asked us to figure it out. We cannot actually do our work remotely. To enable her to work remotely, we will have to dedicate hours of our work time to working on her behalf physically and gathering the required information. It won't be easy to do and to complete our work and we'll have to work additional hours. Our company doesn't pay overtime. All others in my team already have family and kids. I'm the only one without kids or, as others said, responsibilities. They asked me to do the additional work to help Ava out. I said no. I sympathize with Ava, but she decided to have a baby and I cannot work extra hours every day to help her. They said I was being an idiot for not helping. I told them if they cared so much, let us all help together. Then everyone will have fewer extra hours to work. They complained they couldn't since they had family to get back to and responsibilities. I said I have my own life too. We all help together, taking turns or we don't help. I'm not going to sacrifice all my days for her. None of them want to help and I let our boss know. He hired a temporary replacement for Ava. Ava and the rest of my colleagues are calling me an idiot now. So, am I? Not the idiot and not your problem. It's the boss's problem to ensure the work is done and the company's problem to hire enough staff to complete all the work. Surprise, surprise! When the employees refused to take a bunch of extra work for no pay, they were forced to hire another staff member, which they should have done all along. My wife has to fight this every year with holiday schedules. She works a job that is an essential service, and this has to be covered 24-7. Her co-workers always try to goad her into working every holiday because we have kids and families and it's just you and your husband. The heck it's not. We both have families, both have parents, thankfully, and we are a family in any case, and our desire to spend holidays together is just as valid as anyone else's. The point is that you're right. If they aren't willing to take on the extra work, there's no reason why you should either. It would be different if they all agreed and you refused, but that's not the case here. My wife and I adopted Mila, tween, Grace, kindergartner, and Lucas, preschooler, from foster care. Grace and Lucas were in a very loving home that would have adopted them if they could. 
We're still in contact with their foster parents and see them every few months. Mila's home was horrible. She was the first to come to us and we spent nearly a month in the hospital and she needed a feeding tube when she came home. Mila has some special needs that are a direct result of that home. A few months ago, we got a call asking if we could take a younger teen girl, Cassie, from the same home that Mila was in. Cassie's needs aren't as severe as Mila's, but between that and the fact that she's years behind in school, normal schooling would have been difficult for her. My sister was a teaching assistant for special ed at our local school district. It was so bad that she didn't even last a year there. When she heard about the girls, she said not to allow them to end up in special ed in our district. My wife quit her job and homeschooled Mila for the first few months, but she's not a teacher and she didn't know how to help Mila the way she needs it. We started looking for special needs schools and found one over an hour away that we love. My wife got a job in the office there, so we got cheap tuition for Mila and Cassie when she started school there. The girls are doing great at this school and we're considering moving closer to it to make life a little easier. The issue is my wife, Mila and Cassie are out of the house by 6.30 every morning. Cassie is up by 5.30 and Mila is up by 6. They're all tired when it's time to go to school and work, so as a treat, they go to Starbucks every morning. Mila gets a hot chocolate, Cassie can get a small coffee, and my wife gets a coffee to help them through the morning. They're not always the best at getting the cups out of the car by the time the younger two see it, and lately they've been throwing temper tantrums every morning when we pass by a Starbucks. My wife thinks we should get it for them, but I don't want to. It's a waste of money. They can have chocolate milk at home. Am I the idiot for not getting them Starbucks? Not the idiot. Kids can't always get what they want. They need to learn this quickly. Also, while I do not know your financial situation, Starbucks is expensive, and that can add up quickly between four kids, even more if you two buy something. Coffee can be made at home for cheap. Get a few creamers, non-dairy creamers, maybe even an appliance. Whipped cream, chocolate and caramel syrups, and voila! Exactly. Every item can easily be $5, even if it's small. So, three drinks five times a week can quickly get to $75 a week or $300 a month. That is not sustainable. Occasional treats are fine, but when you get kids into a habit like that, it's a waste. Yes, they've been through a rough time, but that doesn't mean you encourage an unnecessary habit. Starbucks isn't cheap. It adds up so quickly. What is it with all these people suddenly freaking out about money and sugar when it's a hot chocolate and small coffee after you've woken up at 5am? Just tell the youngest kids they can have Starbucks when they're older or when they take part in the early morning routine. They'll survive. I don't get all of this, you're an idiot for even looking at a Starbucks. You're an idiot for even looking at a Starbucks is killing me. I also don't understand all these people freaking out over a hot chocolate and small coffee. What's wrong with getting them a little treat for waking up at the crack of dawn? It's really not that much sugar or that much money. I'm a Latina woman married to a white man. We have a pre-tween daughter with curly hair. I love her hair and she loves it too. Last weekend, I noticed she was upset and quiet. I asked what happened and she didn't want to tell me. I insisted and she started crying. She told me her father had made a joke about her hair. He said her hair looked like a rat's nest and that she should straighten it or cut it. He said it was just a joke and that he loved her hair, but she shouldn't tell me about the joke. I was furious and confronted my husband. I started arguing with him and said he was being prejudiced and had hurt our daughter. He apologized and said he didn't mean to offend anyone. He said he was just trying to make a joke and didn't see any issue with her hair. He said I needed to stop dwelling on his mistake and that I was overreacting. I didn't accept his apologies and continued to argue with him. I told him he had no idea what curly hair meant to our daughter and our culture. I said he should respect it and not make such jokes. I said he was foolish for making our daughter feel bad and for making her hide the truth from me. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. That he explicitly told your daughter not to tell you about his joke shows you he knows how wrong and hurtful it was. He can't just say things like that and claim, oh, it was just a joke, so you're not allowed to get mad. Clearly, his joke, regardless of his intention, was hurtful. Instead of sincerely apologizing to you and your daughter, he's treating it like you were being oversensitive and shrugging you off as ridiculous. He doesn't get to decide what does and doesn't hurt someone else. He started your daughter on a path she'll be forced to travel because of others' perceptions of what is acceptable and attractive. Especially today when ethnic hair is forcibly altered illegally by strangers, like cutting, straightening, colouring, etc. 
because their hair doesn't meet certain standards deemed normal. It's especially problematic because this was at the hands of her loving father. It's life-altering. She will remember this for the rest of her life. He has no clue what he started or the future repercussions, and asking her to keep it from you? Seriously troubling. OP, I know you're already rightfully upset about your husband's behavior. Still, I think it's essential to teach her that there is no keeping secrets from her parents, especially each other. A kid taught to keep secrets from their parents becomes very vulnerable to several kinds of severe abuse. There are lessons online about how to teach your kids not to keep secrets, but that planning surprises is okay, for example, because it can be dangerous. Your husband shouldn't be teaching your daughter to keep secrets from you. 